welcome to On the Waterfront, where we dive into the vibrant world that makes up Santa Barbara's harbor, wharf, and beaches. I'm Dominique Samario with the City of Santa Barbara, and we're here on Stern's Wharf, overlooking the harbor and the city behind us. And on today's show, we're going to talk about the history and the maintenance, as well as all there is to do right here on Stern's Wharf. And to start, I have a wonderful guest that I'd love to welcome, author and historian Neil Graffy. Thank you so much for being here with me, Neil. Thank you for having me at this historic spot. Yes, absolutely. So this is right up your alley. And, you know, when I was doing some research on Stern's Wharf, there is so much to learn. So to start out by asking, give us a little background. Let's break that into sections okay. because there really is a lot. So just tell me, before the wharf was here, can you give the viewers a snapshot of what Santa Barbara was like? Miserable. Great. <laughs> there was really no way to get here. Right. There was, the lo roads were lousy and mostly non-existent. So there was no train, no stagecoach. So the only way really to get here was by ship. And to get here by ship without a wharf, you had to be rowed ashore. And because most of the ships at that time were sail ships, they had to stay far enough away from the shore so that if the wind came up, they wouldn't get blown ashore. They had to be able to get and clear this coast and not hit the point on either side. Wow. So to get a passenger ashore, you had to get rowed from about a mile out. All goods that arrived here had to get rowed in. Oh and gosh. things that had to leave Santa Barbara had to get put into small rowboats and rowed a mile or so out to sea to get back onto the ship. So, it was not accommodating for visitors. So, I mean, to me that begs the question, why did people want to get off here then, you know? I mean, that's a lot of work. I mean, what, was, what were the benefits of it? Well, that was pretty much what most California cities were like. So, you had commerce, you had to get goods in where people were living, so you, they had to put up with it. You have to do what you have to do. So then, that difficulty, I'm guessing that's part of what inspired this wharf to be built. Tell me about that process. Well, Santa Barbara had already had another wharf put in in the late 1860s. Oh, wow. And it was at the foot of Chapala Street, hence its name, the Chapala Street Wharf. But at 500 feet long, it was really too short for the large boat to tie up and unload goods. And Santa Barbara was rapidly changing. Between the 1850s and 1870s, we'd quadrupled in size. And also the building materials had changed. People were now, you know, adobes took a long time with a, a population expanding as quick as it was. It wasn't easy to make an adobe house to get all the materials you needed. Mm. We also had brick yards in Santa Barbara. We had our own brick industry going on here, but that took a lot of work and industry. Wood, all you, got, all you need is a saw and a hammer and some nails and you can put a house up. And as much as we have today with the cry that there's not enough room for people, there's not enough room for tourists, same problem in the 1870s. Three newspapers crying, we need a way to get this. So. A man named John Peck Stearns came down from Santa Cruz and said, I'll extend the Chapala Street Wharf. The owner said, no, we're not interested. Oh. So Stearns approached the city of Santa Barbara and got a franchise to build a wharf at the foot of State Street. And so wow. he built the wharf. And as we say, this opened the door to Santa Barbara. Now ships could tie up, easily unload all their supplies as well right. as passengers and get them ashore and also received passengers and supplies. And what year was this in? This was 1872 that the wharf was finally completed. And so that's what we, when we celebrate kind of that, uh, when we had the centennial in 1972, and you know, we're actually coming up, I was thinking about the 150th anniversary will be coming up a few years, but still it's something, we can plan an event for that, so. In Santa Barbara, it'll take that long to plan the event. Hey, you know, come on now. <laughs> yeah, it might be true, it might be true. So now it's 1872, and here's a fact and I've been wanting to ask you somebody told me when you're in the downtown area and you're looking at the homes you mentioned homes being built from wood that you can tell homes that were built pre the wharf and after because of the size of the planks is that true well kind of and kind of not uh, it's, it was an industry standard to make wood a certain size and that changed over the years I don't know what led them to do that maybe harvesting smaller trees didn't allow them to make planks that large but the wood that was coming in before Stern's Wharf was floated ashore. See, they just dumped it off the ship. That's fascinating and to it me. it came in ashore until you had to pick up your lumber all up and down the shore, shorefront. Now that is not the most convenient way to build a house. Oh my goodness. So, okay, now we've got this wharf. What were then the impacts of having this on the city itself? Well, it was an amazing impact on the city. A man named Charles Nordoff had written a book about California for settlers and for travelers. 
and also a chapter for invalids. And he mentioned Santa Barbara, of all the places he had been, was the most accommodating for the invalid. So now people, once the book came out, the wharf wasn't built when the book came out, when the guy was writing the book. Okay. But by the time the book was published, the wharf was here. Now these passengers could, could get safely ashore. And that also brought the invalids here to enjoy Santa Barbara and take its natural climate and health. But also their families and friends coming with them became the tourists. And so we started a tourist industry. Oh. The wharf now allowed people to, and supplies to easily arrive and get into the city and to go back home again. And also, I mean, you mentioned that tourism economy, and that is still impacting us today, which is really incredible. So the wharf has played a huge role in the city that we now live in. Oh, absolutely. Without the wharf, I don't think we would have the city that we have today. And it is kind of funny that when you think about it, when the wharf was first built, everything was coming to the wharf and then into the city. And now look at the wharf. Everybody comes from the city out onto the wharf to take advantage of the beauty and the fun that we have in the wharf today. That's really incredible. Well, we're running out of time, but I wanted to ask you, there's so much knowledge that you have in background. Is there anything that you'd like to share? Is there you know, a little tidbit of info or, or something somebody might be surprised to learn about the history of Stern's Wharf? I think the most fun thing about the wharf to me is that it's a survivor. It has taken everything that nature and man can throw at it and survived. It has evolved. The railroad came in and people thought, well, don't need a wharf, we've got a railroad for supplies. It, it beat that. It beat the highway, it beat trucking, you know, and all these other things that took away the wharf's franchise, what it was here for, and it has survived. But there's one industry that for 143 and a half years has stayed on this wharf and never changed. I it don't involves know. a string, a hook, and plenty of time to wait for the fish to bite. Classic. You can fish right here off the end of Stern's Wharf. You can for all those years, never changed. See, I love that, just keeping the connection to the water. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for all of that background. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. And stick around because up next, we're going to talk about all that goes into keeping this wharf alive and thriving. Minutes away. Hours of fun. Enjoy a taste of Santa Barbara. Experience the romance. Stern's Wharf. Playing near you. Minutes away. Hours of fun. Explore new worlds. Grab a bite. Have a blast. Catch the fun. Stern's Wharf. Playing near you. Welcome back to On the Waterfront. We're here in this episode talking all about our historic Stern's Wharf. We heard about the history, but right now I want to talk about all the maintenance and the work that goes into maintaining this wooden structure that's located right over the Pacific Ocean. And to do that, I have with me Mr. Carl Triberg, our Waterfront Facilities Manager. Thank you so much for being here, Carl. Thanks for having me. So give me a little background on your position at the city and, and what it oversees. Uh, well, the facilities division is one of three divisions of the waterfront department. We're responsible for all the buildings, all the marinas, Stearns Wharf, the city pier, and all the parking lots, the repair and maintenance, and all the capital improvements. Wow, so you're not busy at all. It's great. <laughs> it's good to hear. But, you know, we want to focus on the wharf. So that's a big, big part of your work, I'm assuming. Give me some details. I, how large is the wharf to start? Stern's Wharf is about uh, 2,000 feet long. Wow. To, the deck area is almost four acres. We have 2,000 piles that hold the wharf up, some wood and some steel piles. Um, got four full-time staff out here on the maintenance department with some hourlies, uh, some part-time staff helping to maintain it and maintain the aesthetics and maintain the structural integrity of the wharf. I mean, that's a large structure that you just described. And we heard uh, with our last guest, you know, about the fact that it is a wooden wharf. That has to present some challenges, having a wooden structure right over the water, right? 
Yeah, it really does. Uh, a wooden wharf is a lot like an old wooden ship. We have problems with uh, Torito worms, ship worms. It's hard to believe in the old days shipworms would bring down old wooden ships. Well, shipworms will bring down a wooden wharf if you don't maintain them and deal with them. So it's hard for people to believe that. Wow. So we do a lot of inspection. We do a lot of replacement. And uh, with its exposure to the ocean and large swells, it's really important to maintain the structural integrity of the wharf because even though it's a calm day today, in the middle of winter, you can get some really large swells and, and really push. Uh, the wharf around and we want to make sure it stands with all these people coming out and visiting. Right, yeah, I mean so many people out here visiting and, and actual structures are on this wharf as well. All of our uh, businesses and museum, you guys maintain those as well? Some of the buildings are maintained by the tenants themselves and those okay. are part of the lease agreements. Okay. The multi-tenant buildings we maintain um, and we only have a couple of those, but the bigger buildings, the Ty Warner Sea Center, the Harbor Restaurant, Moby Dick's, that's the responsibility of the tenants themselves. Okay, that's good. Take a little bit of the pressure off. Yeah. So to maintain those things like, you know, say the restaurants um, as well as the wharf, give me a, a picture of what type of work needs to take place over the course of, say, a year. Well, a lot of it has to do with the aesthetics. This is a very, very popular destination in the city. Uh, so we really do our best to make sure it's clean, presentable, uh, keep the paint up on the, all the buildings, whether it's our buildings or areas where there are. Uh, multiple people go there's a mile of handrail that gets painted every year oh wow uh, it's, it's a lot to do and then uh, some of the annual work we do related to the deck boards and the pile driving and so on and so forth that really takes up a lot of work as well yeah you know I mean something needs to be said for the fact that it's a large structure but also cars can drive on this wharf does that add another element of wear and tear yeah there's about a quarter million cars come out here every year and um, we have structural guidelines that help us determine how to maintain it, how strong to make it. And it's really based on the heaviest cars, fire trucks and garbage trucks and those kind of things. Right. Uh, and with that guidance, it really helps us um, make sure that the, the wharf is accessible year round, even in the worst storms. And we almost never close the wharf. Maybe once every two or three years, we'll close it for maybe a half a day during a large swell. That's incredible. I mean, that's yeah. so you're maintaining that's nearly 365 days a year, welcoming right. all of those guests, uh, the businesses. Tell me about any big projects that are going on out here then. Our, our biggest project every year is our annual pile driving project. With 2,000 piles, um, we replace anywhere from 20 to 80 piles a year. It's amazing. Uh, some of the stormier years, you'll get a lot of damage and you will have to really be more aggressive. In a typical year, it's 20 piles. Like this year, we replaced about 28 piles. Uh, it's a pretty big job. It's pretty difficult to do. They have to remove the deck boards and get a big crane out here with a pile driver. And those are for the areas that you can you have access to. The areas under the buildings, the piles were driven in mostly in the 1980s when the wharf was reopened. Mm. You have to use different techniques for those. Um, some of those techniques are just taking out the old piles and, and constructing them in separate pieces. Others are putting fiberglass jackets around existing piles that are deteriorating from rot, shipworms so and whatnot. So then that's to strengthen them? That's to strengthen them, yeah. Okay. So that, that's, a, that's quite the challenge to make sure that this, the piles underneath the buildings are structurally sound because there's not a conventional way to replace them. Wow, that's incredible. So is it that um, when people come out and, you know, myself, I, I walk along the beach and I can see there's that black uh, something surrounding the wooden piles. What is that? Is that that fiberglass or? No, well, some of them are fiberglass. Okay. A lot of them is just a, it, it's a, it's a uh, HDPE wrap. It's okay. a type of plastic wrap, a synthetic product. And it keeps the, the water and the air out and the worms out. So oh, we that's wrap important. them all, every pile is wrapped and it really increases the, the lifespan of each individual pile. Nowadays, when we, when we drive new piles, they're pre-coated, they're sort of pre-wrapped. Oh, so wow. it makes it a lot easier. Where in the past, we'd drive a bare wooden pile, then divers would go in and put the wrap around and strap time around. It was very, very labor intensive. But it, it makes a pile last, instead of maybe lasting 10 years, it'll last 30 years or longer. Oh wow, so some big benefits it to that. It makes a big difference, yeah. So, uh, you know, I've heard of the wharf referred to as like the Golden Gate Bridge of Santa Barbara, but, and it really sounds like that. I mean, this is just ongoing maintenance has to happen all the time, right? Yeah, we are, you know, we're, we're open seven days a week, but maintenance is occurring Monday through Friday every day and something's going on, whether it's dealing with the stuff on the surface that you see or dealing with the utilities that are all underneath and alongside the wharf. There's miles of water line and electrical line, sewer lines, and these all need to be inspected and uh, repaired and replaced as needed. 
it's really incredible. So we're actually um, getting close to being out of time, but just leave the viewers with what's your favorite part then about being, I mean, you're responsible for such a historic and iconic structure. Well, it's, it's just such a beautiful area and, and to get paid to come out here and maintain it and inspect it is, I'm pretty lucky. It's a, it's a dream job, I always tell people. Um, and I enjoy working out here and uh, take pride in the fact that I make this, do my best and my staff do their best maintaining this worth making it accessible to everybody in Santa Barbara, locals and visitors alike. Uh, and it's accessible year round in the worst weather and the nicest weather. So come out and enjoy it. That's great. Thank you so much for being with us today, Carl. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. And stick around because up next, we're going to talk about all the things that you can do right here on Stearns Wharf. Minutes away. Hours of fun. Enjoy a taste of Santa Barbara. Experience the romance. Stern's Wharf. Playing near you. Minutes away. Hours of fun. Explore new worlds. Grab a bite. Have a blast. Catch the fun. Stern's Wharf. Playing near you. Welcome back to On the Waterfront. After talking about the history and the maintenance that goes into keeping up Stern's Wharf, let's talk about all there is to do out here. So I have a lovely guest with me, Miss Amanda Allen, the director of Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History Sea Center, and also an active member of the Stearns Wharf Merchants Association. Thank you so much for being with me, Amanda. Absolutely, thank you. So, you know, we went a lot into the history and, and everything, like I said, it takes to keep up this wooden wharf, mm -hmm. but I want to hear more about the Stearns Wharf merchants and, and what is out here. So if you were to describe to somebody, what can you do out on the wharf? What would you tell them? Oh my gosh, I would say there's something for everybody. Um, it's a variety of restaurants, we have recreational opportunities and a lot of unique specialty shops as well. So if it's uh, fresh seafood or grilled food or exquisite dining, you can definitely enjoy a great meal with a family or a romantic date night. And goodness, the, our mommy friends and I, I think one of our favorite things to do on the wharf is to bring our kids out, go to the sea center, and then grab a treat for our kids, either at the candy shop or the ice cream shop, and maybe a glass of wine for us, <laughs> which is also really nice. And then there's so much more. Um, you can have your palm ride, you can go fishing, uh, you could buy that perfect gift for your friends and family that's visiting from out of town. So it's just such a variety. It's a great time out here. You know, you mentioned all of that variety and when I was looking into doing this episode, there are over 15 different tenants here on the mm. wharf and you might not think it. I mean, that's a lot of different things going on um, on this space over the water, which is really incredible. You know, you talked about bringing the kids out. Mm -hmm. One of the things that always strikes me is that there really is something for everyone. And one of the great things for the kids is the Sea Center and that's where you're the director. So tell us more about that. Oh goodness, I am, feel so lucky to work out here on the wharf and especially at the Sea Center. It's uh, your window to the Santa Barbara Channel. When you're on the wharf, um, and just looking around, it's gorgeous. And you, you see the surface of the ocean and oftentimes we'll even see what, a sea lion swimming by or a whale or a dolphin. But if you really want to dive down and see what's underneath the surface, coming into the Sea Center gives you that great perspective of all the amazing marine life you can find right underneath the wharf. So what are some of the things that you can do in there? Oh, we have touch tanks so you can oh, wow. actually see um, and touch some of the smaller coastal sharks that are nearby. Oh, wow. 
Huh. We have, um, goodness, sea stars. We have oceanographic demonstrations. So one of the cool things you could do at the Sea Center is actually take your own ocean sample of the seafloor, bring it up, sort through it, and find little clams or shrimp or worms even. It's uh, something different every day. You never know what you're going to find. Wow, and so that's great for the little ones and, and up to what age? Because I bet you have probably classes that come in, I'm guessing. and. I think there's something for every age at the Sea Center. I, I I still get excited when we pull up something unique from the from the wet deck. So yeah, sometimes we'll pull up a, an octopus even, and all of the staff wants to come down and see it. So it's oh, it's wow. really exciting no matter how old you are. That's great. So then you know that's what you do for your your job, right. but then. As I mentioned, you're also a really active member of the Stearns Wharf Merchants mm. Association. So just tell me a little bit more, what, what does that mean to somebody who hasn't heard of it? What are you guys uh, doing and, and why did you form? Yeah, sure. So all of the merchants and organizations that do business on the wharf are part of the Stearns Wharf Merchants Association. And we work to maintain the vibrancy and the accessibility of the wharf for our local community and for the visitors to Santa Barbara. That's great. And so are you guys working on any kind of projects, upcoming things right now, outreach, anything like that? Right now, we're really just looking forward to an exciting summer. Right. Yeah. That's a busy time, it I'm is. guessing, it right? Is. Yes, it is a busy time, but it's a really fun time to be out here. Right. Every time you come out, it's, it's vibrant. That's a great way to describe it. It's not crowded, it just feels vibrant and alive and there's such a variety of people. Um, you know something that I find very fascinating and I'm sure we share this with the Merchants Association, but there are over one million people who walk out onto the wharf every year, actually closer to 1.1 million people. Did you know that? Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I mean, isn't that incredible? Plus an additional, one of the special things about our wharf is that you can drive out onto the wharf and park right. and there are over 250,000 cars that drive out onto this wharf every year yes I mean that's so impressive and you guys are here to serve them absolutely and is that something do you enjoy your job because of being able to interact with all of those people and visitors oh of course coming out on the wharf and seeing everybody feeling like they escaped for a little while I think that's the feeling when you get out here you kind of drop your daily worries behind you and you feel the ocean breeze and everyone's having a good time taking pictures together it's such a joy that's really neat. Yeah. You mentioned earlier, and, and this again kind of goes with that variety of things to do, but there's also some um, active things you can do. Like you can actually fish from our wharf um, mm -hmm. and also take the little toot. Tell viewers what the little toot is if, if they don't know what it is. Oh, it's a really awesome water taxi between the harbor and the wharf. And it is just super fun. You also can see the sea lions on one of the buoys on your way. Oh, and that's it's just so a, great, a great thing to do um, to get back and forth, but also just for a little boating excursion. Exactly, that's what I think is neat. Mm -hmm. You can come out here and you can actually get out on the boat or you can go fish. Um, yep. They have, you know, you can rent the fishing gear and they have the bait and tackle and everything that you need. And we're within walking distance to our downtown. Right. It's really incredible that there's that kind of variety here, I think. Yeah, so it's a local gem right right here. Also, it's a really great spot for some events throughout the year. Mm. So tell me tell me what somebody could do coming to some events. Well, let's see. A big one is July 4th. Yes. It's a fantastic location to see the fireworks. And the Merchants Association usually brings out live music. And we do, that's a, one of the days that we close the wharf from vehicle traffic. So it's pedestrian only, but it's a, an amazing, amazing time. And another one, it would be Parade of Lights. Yes. We love working with the harbor um, for the Parade of Lights in December. And it is a, another perfect viewing of that. Right. I mean, it's such a great spot to come out. The boats come right by the wharf. Mm -hmm. Plus, we bring out, um, I love, we bring out the carolers. And right. you can go get, you know, some fudge or hot chocolate. And the tree lighting. And the tree lighting. Yes. So that was the other thing that I thought was really special. I have a little one. And to come out right by the seaside. Center, they bring out this amazing Christmas tree and come to the tree lighting and um, so it really is throughout the year check back you know check back for events because there's so much to do out here which is really exciting so we're actually running out of time on the show but I want to ask you yes. if you had a visitor mm -hmm. coming to town um, why would you bring them out here I mean, I'm hoping, you know, it's where you work and you love your job, <laughs> I'm guessing. Course. But, you know, why would you bring them here? 
because it's quintessential Santa Barbara coming out onto the wharf that you have views you can't get anywhere else. That's right. And then there's the view of looking back on the city and the, it just makes you so proud to be in Santa Barbara and to share it with your family and friends. It's really picturesque. Yes. It really is. So thank you again, Amanda, for taking the time to be with us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching. On our next episode, we'll actually head over to Santa Barbara Harbor again to talk about all that's going on in that lively spot. But until then, if you'd like more information on all our waterfront department has to offer, including Stearns Wharf, the Harbor, or waterfront parking, visit our website at santabarbaraca.gov forward slash waterfront, or stop by and give us a visit. We're at 132A Harbor Way. Until next time, I hope to see you on the waterfront. <laughs>